today I'm going to be making some small decorative pieces with some scrap offcuts. This happens to be a piece of maple. It's about five inches by two and a half inches by about a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch. But uh, we've got a few pieces here. They're all slightly different sizes, but they're from the same piece of wood, but there's different thicknesses. I just kind of cut them up on my, my bandsaw and sanded them down flat. I'm going to be using this jig that I made, which was from a from a jig that Ruby Claire had made and this is my version of the same jig so basically I sacrificed a faceplate specifically just for this jig um, you can buy them on Amazon for about 25 bucks uh, this is an inch and a quarter by uh, four inches inch and a quarter one eighth TPI by about four inches um, basically put a ball blank on that and trued it up and made it flat and then I made another small piece which goes on front of that and I actually used a hole saw to drill through that which I think was a I forget now three inches three and a half inch hole saw is what I used and then basically I turned this piece to fit in there slot in there this slightly is slightly this surface here is slightly higher than this surface and then this is set back and then I used my indexing system on the lathe to mark 48 positions around the circumference of that base and then I put these two screws with washers they hold it down firmly and I made my starting point wherever you want it it's not critical but I use the same starting point each time and then I can go left or right off of center so it starts off center right off the get-go so without further ado what I'm going to use is carpet tape to glue this piece of wood to the to the jig and then I'll use hot glue just down the sides because uh, you don't want this thing coming off so carpet glue is okay but I like to have a little bit more security with the hot glue now I'm going to be turning this in forward and reverse so I'm going to lock down the faceplate to the spindle with the set screws so that's not going to come off right now what I'll do is I'll get the carpet tape on and I'll come right back to you when I'm hot gluing that piece on so I put the carpet tape on the back side of this and it doesn't hold the best to be honest so I'm going to add some hot glue in here hold that in place and then turn it around do the same on the the other side And just hold that into place while it while it cures okay so this arrow is marking my starting point and I can go both directions from there so I'll start going in this direction and then I'll come back and start going in the other direction and let's see what we get the first thing I'll do is I'll mark my center which will be that broke my lid the first thing I'll do, I'll use this carpenter's pencil. So that's a bit bigger than I really want, that circle, so I'll make it a bit smaller. Right about there. So that's my starting point, that circle. I'll make a nice little bead there. I'll be using my spindle gouge. This is the uh, Carter & Son spindle gouge. and we'll bring the speed up and make a little bit of a bead a little bit of a bead in the middle there like that and then what we'll do is we'll now ah that's great I can't access the screws <laughs> isn't that fantastic so I'm actually gonna have to reduce the size of this piece of wood because I made it too big and I can't access the screws silly me silly silly me okay so <laughs> I'll come back to you when I've done that. Thank you. 
Okay, so I exceeded the uh, the limitations of this jig, so now I've brought it back down to a size that I can actually handle, because I have to be able to access both of these screws for every single turn. So now that I've done that, let's see what we can do. So my starting point is always in the same place, that arrow pointing that direction, and now I'm just going to move that over to the first location, which is one of one of 48 positions, and you can do this uh, 16 positions, 8 positions, whatever your indexing system has on your lathe. So now we can take the pencil and just kind of get a feel for where we want this next line to be. Right there. Right there. You can see it's just slightly off center from the previous one. So let's turn that. Take a quick look. I like that. We'll just round that over a little bit more. Both directions. Okay, that's good. We'll move on to the next location. Just bump it around one more turn there. Right there. Now I probably will eventually put numbers there or letters. Um, maybe numbers on one side, letters on the other side, so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. That's what Ruby did. I'll probably do the same thing. So let's mark our next position. Just like that. Now this is going about 930 uh, RPM. So it's not crazy fast. You could probably go faster, but... Round that over just a little bit. And this side too. Take a look at that. Okay. Now this can this can be sanded during or after or whenever. Probably afterwards would be just as easy. Okay, let's move it around another turn. people moving around upstairs. Okay, and let's right there. Okay, 
this corner is kind of getting in the way now. <laughs> I'm going to cut that corner off. Because we can shape this afterwards anyway. You might be better off, you could always use the offcuts from bowl bases. If you have a, a piece left over from uh, when you remove a, a tenon or something. Turn this one. Take a look at that. That's cool. Two. Did I move two? I think I might end up without realizing. I think I moved two spots. Yeah, I did. Well, that's okay. We can turn this one too. Why there was a bigger gap. Again, this is this is my third, no, fourth attempt at this. The first two were fails. The third one was a success. Cannot find that piece. I don't know what I did with it. Now I'll move two to get to the where we we're at. Get my, tighten that up. Now I used maple. This is hard maple. You don't want a soft wood because you want those screws to get in there nice and tight each time. Okay. Let's do this one. Okay, let's move to the next one. It's going to be interesting to see if I go both ways, see uh, both counterclockwise and clockwise, see what happens. So at this point you're turning some air, there's a lot of mist area, a lot of air that you're going through. So you want a nice sharp tool. I don't suggest scraping because scraping tends to catch the edges of this piece of wood as it comes around. At least that's from my experience anyway. I did try the first couple with a, with a scraper, um, but it didn't work out for me. So. Uh, Definitely advise using a, t a sharp spindle gouge. All right, where are we at now? Right there. All right.
We're getting close to the limit of this piece of wood. Maybe one or two more cuts. That one's kind of messed up. That's too bad, but that's okay. It's just a practice piece. Where are we at now? Right there. Yeah, it's definitely worth putting numbers on there because that way you don't miss a slot like I did. This one. Kind of psychedelic. Right, one last one on this piece of wood, I think. Probably don't even need to. In fact, I'm not going to. So that's one direction that's going in one direction and you can literally cut any shape you want to make that look like a snail shell of some sort so I would cut around the circumference of one of these and then kind of uh, do whatever you want maybe maybe cut around there cut around here and then come around those to, to take off the square appearance of it um, I'm actually going to go back to the beginning and go in the opposite direction and see how does that look. Maybe it's a bad idea, I don't know. Okay, so we started right there. Now I want to go in the other direction, which is that's the first spot. see what that would do. That's hard to see. Hard to see that because I haven't got much to mark on. But we're going to give it a go. have to get that start mark so I know where I'm cutting otherwise I can't see it make a great accent to a box lid or something. Or furniture or something like that. A brooch. That's what Ruby does with them. She makes little brooches. Okay, that's the mark there I think. I'm going to turn the light on because I'm having a little bit of difficulty seeing that. If that might help or not. Nope. Didn't help at all. Oh, 
I think that's it there. Hope it was. Kinda. I'm not sure if I skipped one again, did I? Not sure. One, two, three cuts. Three cuts, no, that's good. Moving on to the fourth cut in this direction. It's key that these are tight. If this is wobbling around at all, this has to be secure. So the way I've got it right now, it's set up. So this is secure, it's not moving. So that's, that's key. Okay, so where are we now? Right there. Maybe I can see that bit though. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good. You can see that. So these are very easy cuts, they're not difficult cuts to make. You just need to have a very sharp, tall, steady hand and a definite position to, to cut with. Just spin it round, right there, one, two, three, four, five, fifth cut, one, two, three, four, five, yep. Okay, I think I've got it. Can't see it. Where are you? Somewhere there. Should be able to see that, I hope. Yep, I can see it now. And I think that is pretty much done. It's where we're at. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to take this off the lathe now and uh, see what we can do with it. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the uh, scroll saw and I'm going to remove some of the corners. I want to kind of shape it so that it's not got any flat surfaces. So I'm going to round off this side, round off this side, do something under here, I don't know what, and then do something up here, I don't know what, but we'll come up with something at the scroll saw 
and then who knows what that could be almost looks like an elephant's eye okay let's take it to the scroll saw and see what we can do right we're at the scroll saw this is a spiral blade tensions on uh, let's do some cutting so I don't have to cut in any particular direction with a spiral blade I'm not exactly the world's best scroll saw by any means but uh, let's see what we can do Let's talk one straight edge, then go up the straight edge. Oh! Okay, don't get anything all the way down. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move this section, yeah, and then that section. I ended up cutting off a little bit more because I didn't like the shape still not sure what I would do with it but yeah it kind of looks like an elephant eye or I don't know something that you could make a whole bunch of in a row who knows what you could do with this um, you could make another one and put it alongside of it there are lots of options and what you could use these for um, but it's just a nice little accent it's kind of a cool project to, to do not only was it a cool project to make the jig but it was also kind of neat to make this this is the fir the fourth piece I've made the first second first and second ones were fails they are here somewhere they are right here the very first one I tried using a scraper basically and I ended up catching it and it flew off the lathe but it was only held on with just the double-sided cast tape the second one I managed to get a little bit further, although I wasn't really overly happy with the... Because I was scraping it, I wasn't getting a very good cut. I was literally using... I was using the uh, detailing tool, this carbide tool. Highly recommend using a spindle gouge. This is a very, very sharp little spindle gouge, worked out great. You could possibly even use a bowl gouge just by, you know, very, very slight touches. But that's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to make. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and maybe I'll get some more videos out real soon. Take care now. Don't forget to watch Rob and Steve when they come up on their next show too. Take care now. Bye.